we did uh, take on a pretty significant effort this year with the staff to update MPW's strategic plan. So even despite the challenges that the pandemic brought with it and uh, remote work activities coming into play, uh, we felt it was important to continue to keep this effort going forward because we see the value in having an intentional strategy for the future of this utility. And so we wanted to make sure that we kept that going despite the pandemic uh, challenges. So for those of you, a lot of the folks on this call are business owners or, or CEOs or executives. So you understand the need to do strategic planning. It's important to step back uh, and look at that broader view of where your organization is heading or where you want it to head. Uh, it allows us to ensure that we stay true to our core values uh, and our community and customer needs, that we reset everything back to those fundamentals. Uh, it allows us to have a common understanding among staff and provide some focus uh, and priorities for how we allocate resources uh, in the coming years. Uh, and then it's also important for us to develop a plan that we can communicate to stakeholders so that you all can understand where is your utility headed and what are we planning to do in the future? We think that's a very important aspect of this as well. So when we went through our process internally, we talked a lot about value propositions. So to me, value propositions are things that are the most important to customers about the services you provide. Uh, what do you do that means the most to them? What do you do that uh, you can do better than maybe an alternate provider would do? Uh, and so those are the things we really wanted to focus on and then build around those value propositions uh, as we set our strategy. So we went through this process for each of the three utilities, but uh, these are the common themes that came out of that. Uh, first is local control, so important and a big reason why municipal utilities uh, are successful. Reliability, extremely important in all three of our utility services now and making sure that we stay ahead of that uh, with our investment. Uh, which ties in the next one, reinvestment infrastructure. So by having that local control, you can ensure that you're making the investments that your community really needs versus if you're fighting for investments with say, a large private provider that serves a multi-state area. Another big one is fast response. So we've got local crews. We talk a lot about neighbors serving neighbors. Uh, and that's what we really have here. And so when we do have outages or concerns in the community, uh, we can get uh, uh, crews out there very quickly. Uh, low rates, Mark touched on, especially on the electric and water side. Uh, we take a lot of pride and have for many years on our, uh, our rate benchmarking and how we compare very favorably to state and national averages. And then local top-notch service. Uh, I talked about it for the field crews, but also our customer service and help desk folks uh, here in the office. I continue to just get uh, phenomenal feedback from those in the community about services that they've received uh, from the staff here in the office. So very, very important to our customers. So building on that, we identified five overarching strategies. So these are the highest level strategies that we built into our plan. Uh, for the next three to five years. The first one is we will develop great employees and leaders. And we put this first because I just think it's so foundational to everything we do. We have to have the staff that are capable and qualified to do to execute anything else in the strategic plan. So we think it's so important. Uh, next is give customers reasons to love MPW. So I think we've got a really dedicated uh, customer base already, but in going through this process, we certainly identified that we need to stay ahead of that. We need to be proactive and there are definitely uh, uh, objectives we can build into our plan uh, to help even strengthen that customer relationship. Third is to invest responsibly in reliability. So we talked about the importance of reliability and local control. Uh, that means we need to continue to invest. We've got a lot of infrastructure that's decades old, uh, even a hundred years old in some cases. Uh, we need to make sure that we're making the investments to ensure reliability going forward. Next is to power the future. Doug talked about about the power supply and some of the recommendations coming out of that. We're facing a, a significant transition uh, in our history of how we provide power to this community. And so this will be a key part of our strategy going forward. And last is to grow our services. So even though we got a fairly defined uh, territory that we serve in the Muscatine community, uh, we did identify going through this process that there are some opportunities for us to grow our services a little bit in terms of service territory in some cases, and also in the types of services that we provide. So 
this is a, a little bit of the structure of the plan. So I talked about the highest level strategies. I'm gonna walk through that next level down here very quickly for each strategy, what we refer to as objectives. And then as you can imagine, it goes many layers deeper than that. You get into projects and initiatives and then department object, uh, goals. Uh, I won't go that deep, but I, I do wanna review the objectives for each of the strategies here today. First strategy is develop great employees and leaders. Uh, as I mentioned, how important that is to accomplish anything else. And go ahead and bring up the objectives here, Brenda. So we identified three objectives in this strategy. The first is to provide opportunities for employees to engage in a lifetime of learning. We think it's so important to get employees onboarded and trained initially so that they're set up for success. But then we really want to challenge employees to develop throughout their career and continue to build their skills and get better at what they do over time. Next is to build operational excellence into all aspects of the utility. And this is gonna focus on safety. Uh, we've got a really strong safety culture of the utility. We think we can go even farther to the next level with that. Uh, we're also gonna focus on continuous improvement. We've had a, a CI effort at the utility for several years, but we're, we're starting to gain even more traction and momentum on that in the last year uh, and really focus on that just continual cycle of improving everything that we do. And third, uh, leverage advancements in technology to improve processes and become more information driven. Uh, you saw some examples of some of the outage map tools that we've uh, in improved upon over recent years with technology. We're also gonna try and improve the way we leverage the data that we collect uh, to help us make decisions uh, more efficiently. The next strategy uh, is to give customers reasons to love MPW. And I like this little tagline here that for us, every experience is an opportunity to delight a customer. And we need to take the initiative to add that value to our customers. So again, three objectives on this one. First, provide an interactive and forward thinking customer experience. Erica touched on the plans to uh, redesign our website to provide uh, more self-service functionality uh, and make the information sharing more efficient for customers. And she also mentioned our customer information and billing system, a major project for us uh, that will not only improve some processes on our end, but hopefully provide some additional functionality and information for our customers. Uh, next is deliver exceptional outage response. We think this is something that we do really well already, but we've got plans to continue to improve that process in the coming years. And third, support improvements in our community. And, and this involves several different aspects, including supporting projects that the city is working on, uh, like the sewer separation, like Grandview Avenue in the coming years, the Park Avenue project we mentioned. Uh, also working with GMCCI, the chamber, uh, and getting involved in their economic development activities in particular. So ensuring that we can try to add customer base and build load in the coming years. And then also working with community groups. So we, we have a seat at the table and we can discuss where we can add value to some of the plans that are going on throughout the community. Next is to invest responsibly in reliability. As I mentioned, that proactive nature, making sure that we're forecasting and looking years ahead uh, so that we can plan the investments that are needed. And also that allows us to balance out those investments as much as possible to make sure that the rate impacts are, are very modest. Uh, and again, we this is a big one for us. Uh, we've got a lot of infrastructure throughout the community. You, you heard talk about the miles of transmission lines and poles and water main. So we've got uh, several objectives here. The first three focus on reliability in the, the three utilities. The first, the electric system. Ryan talked about the new transmission line, which will be a key part of that going forward, as well as many other uh, infrastructure improvements in the coming years. On the water system side, again, we need to achieve best in class water system reliability. Uh, we think we've got some very strong reliability data. We don't have a good benchmark on that now, but we think we probably are best in class, but we need to gather some of that benchmark data. And then we need to continue to stay ahead of it. Ryan mentioned the West Hill uh, pumping station upgrade that we have planned in 2021, uh, as well as other upgrades in the coming years. Uh, we need to achieve best in class communication system reliability. Uh, it's been extremely difficult for the last few years to try and manage the transition from a legacy system to the new fiber system. When you have customers on both and we got to a point where the legacy system was really beyond its useful life. Uh, and, and we were in an investment cycle where we didn't wanna put money into the old system because we're transitioning away. Uh, but managing through that transition, as you can imagine, is uh, very difficult. So we're excited about now being able to focus on the fiber system once we get customers fully converted in the coming months, uh, and then really dedicate uh, to improving the reliability of that system in the future. 
Fourth is to improve and maintain facilities to reflect our brand. So we, we certainly have some facilities in the community that as we drive by, we see opportunities for some improvements so that the facilities reflect our standard for reliability and safety in the community. Uh, we also have some corporate network uh, uh, projects plan that kind of fall into this objective too on the back end. Uh, and then last is uh, improve our cybersecurity posture. This has been a critical issue for us for several years, but we think there's still work to be done here. And we want to make sure this is part of our strategy to ensure that we stay ahead of uh, the game and we keep an eye on uh, how those threats are evolving in the coming years and ensure the safety and security of our customer uh, cyber systems. Next slide is to power the future. I talked about the significant transition that we're, we'll be going through in the coming years. Uh, on power supply. So the objectives on this strategy, first, we are looking to expand our renewable portfolio. Doug talked about uh, potential solar site at the Granby well field, as well as a potential uh, for more solar beyond that. We're going to continue to investigate the replacement of local generation with uh, things like the uh, combined heat and power unit that Doug talked about that we think is an, an excellent fit for specifically the Muscatine community. Uh, and is about the most efficient way that you can use energy to uh, make electricity and, uh, and thermal steam for an industrial process. Uh, we're going to reduce our environmental impact. So with the plans that we already have in place and some of these future investigations, uh, we will see uh, a reduction in emissions and carbon emissions in particular in the coming years. So we're excited about those goals. Uh, and then we will transition reliably and safely. So. As we go through this process, you can imagine these assets uh, that we have to provide power are extremely important to the reliability of our electrical system. We need to make sure that as we plan for a transition, uh, that we do that in a way that does not compromise our reliability. And part of that is making sure that those plants continue to operate safely over these next several years as we work through that transition. Uh, it's definitely something that we can't overlook. The last strategy is to grow our services. As I mentioned we identified a few opportunities that we think we can grow our services and our impact to the Muscatine community. We identified four objectives here. The first is electrify Muscatine 2.0. I say 2.0 because we already electrified Muscatine once back in the uh, early to mid 1920s when uh, we built out the electrical distribution system and got customers connected to electricity. Uh, the industry is facing another transition to where there are other opportunities to electrify energy use. Obviously, electric vehicles is one of the biggest highlights of that right now, so we'll be focusing on that. But we we, we think there's other opportunities for that transition as well that we'll be focusing on in the coming years. We're going to deliver communications product offerings to meet customer expectations. We identified that we think there are some opportunities for additional support services for communications, uh, both on the business class side and maybe on the residential side as well, that we'll be evaluating in the coming years and potentially launching uh, for our customers. Erica mentioned also the next objective, we think there are some territories right kind of on the fringe or the boundary of our existing fiber system that we think are a good fit for expansion of that fiber system in the coming years. We know there are customers that are hungry for that fiber service and the higher speeds and reliability that goes with it. Uh, and we think we can make a case for some of the, that expansion that actually provides some value to our existing customers by providing a payback on that expansion, but also increases our impact to the community. And last, we think there are opportunities to expand our water service by working with existing housing developments as well as new housing developments. We actually have one in the works now. It's an existing development that we're looking at an opportunity to potentially uh, transition water supply from a private system to ours. We need to look for opportunities like that going forward that are a win-win. So again, they provide benefit to our existing customers, but also can be a benefit to those developments. Uh, we also have looked at things like providing wholesale water uh, to rural water services. That's been something that's been in the newspaper recently. Uh, so those are opportunities that we want to explore. Again, we need to make sure that uh, it serves our existing customer base well. Uh, that's first priority, but we think there are potentially some opportunities for uh, expansion in the coming years there. So this is uh, just meant to be kind of a nice visual recap. So again, this is at the highest level, the five strategies and the objectives underneath them. As I mentioned, this goes a lot deeper as we start to 
uh, start to deploy these strategies into our organization. Uh, we're starting to set department goals that feed into these objectives and strategies for the coming year. But again, this is a, a three to five year plan. Uh, some of this work we'll see good progress on in the next year with some of the projects we have. Some of these efforts will be things that will be worked on in the coming years and we'll see progress uh, over the course uh, of the next five years. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it's ambitious. There's a significant amount of work to be done when you put all of this together. Uh, but uh, hopefully, as you picked up on hearing the presentations today, we've got a really strong senior leadership team here at MPW, and we've got a really strong team of staff supporting uh, those senior leaders throughout the organization. Uh, and so I'm very confident uh, uh, that our staff can accomplish these ambitious goals that we have in our strategy because we've got a very dedicated staff. So in addition to being competent, they're very dedicated. They're committed to the community. They're committed to uh, the importance of the utility services that we provide to Muscatine. Uh, and we're excited to see what we can accomplish on these strategies in the coming years. So, um, well, I think we'll pause again for any questions. Uh, feel free to, again, drop any questions in the chat box, whether it relates to the strategic plan, or, or anything else that you saw uh, earlier in the presentation. Uh, looks like we have another one come in here. Let me read it. Yeah, so question about uh, flooding. So yeah, while it didn't uh, hit any of our discussions today, um, flooding and levy upgrades has been uh, another very uh, important topic that we've discussed with some community partners uh, over the last several years uh, and working with uh, Rich Dwyer from uh, from Kent has been a really strong leader in this effort and really trying to pull key uh, stakeholders throughout the community together to address uh, some of those um, risks uh, that we have with the levy system, especially south of Muscatine. Uh, so we started building into some of our uh, disaster response plans, additional detail about how we would handle major flood events, including uh, levy failures or levy breaches. Uh, so we're trying to get those details into our plan so that we can be prepared. We've done some tabletop exercises uh, for how we would respond to a major flood event like a levy breach, uh, but also working with the partners like Kent to what can we do to improve the levy system downstream uh, of Muscatine so that we can further reduce the risk uh, of a major event like that. So I think that is going to be very important work that we uh, try to accomplish in the coming years. So again, if you do have any questions that uh, that you think of, um, whether it be here in the last couple of minutes, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, don't hesitate to reach out to uh, myself directly or anybody else on our team. Uh, a lot of you know some of the members of the senior leadership team here. So don't hesitate to reach out, uh, whether it's a question about any of this information or anytime you have a question about our utility operations. Uh, we, we want to be a very engaging partner with our community members and are happy to talk through any concerns that you might have. Uh, so lastly, uh, just a thank you to you for your support in attending this event and uh, hopefully you'll be able to share uh, some of the this information with uh, with your peers. Um, and a thank you to our staff. So uh, we say we're truly honored to serve Muscatine. I feel that in our organization every day. Uh, we've got a very committed and dedicated staff here. We take what we do and the role we play in Muscatine very seriously. And we truly are, are honored to be able to, to do that day in and day out. Uh, we've got an excellent group of folks here. If you ever do come across uh, one of our staff here at MPW, uh, please do thank them for their efforts. We, they play a big role in this community and we're grateful for what they do. So with that, uh, if we don't have any other questions come through, I think we will probably roll to a close. Um, thank you to uh, our directors, leadership team here today for your presentations. Thank you very much to uh, Holly Jurgensen who um, really helped quarterback uh, this effort and work with uh, uh, Erica and the other directors to put the presentation together and the content and to get the uh, WebEx uh, logistics all sorted out. Uh, and uh, Brenda as well for assisting with all those planning activities. So. Uh, thank you to our team and thank you to all of you for uh, joining us today. So have a very good rest of your week.